Hello everybody, my name is Manu S and welcome to another Eternal Bruce video series. Um, after I have taken time off a bit because of the hardware issues, I figured even though I just released a deck tech yesterday, why not just make another one today? And since someone already asked about this deck since they played me when I played this deck and I crushed them with it, um, it's time to talk about it and share it with you guys since it's actually pretty competitive and interesting and also fairly cheap. Alright, so let's talk about the deck. It's basically a more aggressive, lower to the ground approach to what Shimmer Pack is trying to do. It's basically a Praxis token deck built around all the good time cards and Xenon Obelisk, combining it with some of the fire cards that fit the strategy really well, especially Grenade and Drone and Assembly Line, but also Torch for early removal and Tempo and also as a way to finish off the opponent occasionally. Um, General Isalio as like kind of pseudo shimmer pack in a way. It has a similar effect on the board, it's a lot cheaper and we go much wider, much harder than shimmer pack, so Giving all our units plus 2 plus 0 is pretty strong. The 6 4 quick draw buddy is decent. It's a bit vulnerable, especially because it dies to annihilate, so um, you can't rely on it when your opponent plays, sh uh, plays Shadow, for example, and has um, power open and they can annihilate it, so you gotta be a bit careful with that. It's just like as a curve topper for the deck, since other than that, the deck is pretty low curve and low to the ground. <laughs> and the other curve topper basically is Flame Blast, which has been doing phenomenal work for me. I have Flame Blasted people for like 14 out of the game, like the player in question was playing Armory and the game went really long and at one point I just drew a Flame Blast for 14, which was exactly enough to kill him. And that was like the biggest Flame Blast of my life. <laughs> okay, so let's go over the decklist real quick. So we have the one drops, grenade and drone and initiate. Initiate is the more important one drop on turn one, simply because it accelerates us, lets us put more on the board quicker. But grenade and drone is um, either great on turn one, if we can play it on turn one, or to squeeze it in the curve with other stuff later to just flood the board. Um, torch doesn't need much explanation at this point, stops relic weapons, kills opponents, Kills units very cheap and efficiently, just a very flexible um, card and arguably the best card in the game. Uh, then we have the two drops, Talia's favored, just helps us um, hit our power drops and provides a body for our um, pump effects, which is exactly what we want. It's a nice two for one here basically. Um, same with Temple Scribe, but instead of providing us with power, it provides us with a random card and one health, which is arguably even better. And it's a 1-1, one, one, so it is a sort of a threat on its own. doesn't need any help to even attack on an empty ward. Then we have the 3-drops for Amber Acolyte. Basically the same as Talia's favorite and stronger. It's especially important because we basically run uh, double time and triple fire cards. So the uh, influence fixing from Amber Acolyte is what uh, holding it together and usually gets us like the last influence we need and also um, helps us further to grow our flame blasts, get to our obelisk threshold and just generally hit our power drop so we can do multiple things per turn. And yeah, assembly line is like the power play basically. It's like the small scouting party costs half, gives us three quarters of um, the effect while of course, the Grenadians don't draw cards. It is not that important in this deck, given the fact that it's so much cheaper and so much more efficient at doing what it does. It just um, helps us really well, overwhelming the opponent usually. And as you can already notice trend-wise, like all units so far are really good against removal. Like removal is really bad against them. Like the only unit that you can like one for one answer is initiative descent 
and a lot of ways of doing that cost more power cost more power or at least the same power so it will always be a neutral or tempo positive play um, next we have unlock potential that's basically like the the additional um, ansem type effect obelisk type effect um, I opted for unlock potential over something like rally because first of all it's permanent it's more flexible since um, together with the other effects the added health uh, can add up quickly and generate a board that makes it near impossible for the opponent to profitably attack into giving us more time to reach our obelisk threshold for example or find more pump effects to overwhelm the opponent so yeah it's just more flexible where rally is only a one-shot thing and only uh, good on offense usually drawing multiples of these is pretty nice sometimes drawing too many can be a bit clunky um, it is possible that the force maybe better should be something else but not sure what maybe like another Visalio or something or like a Carnosaur not sure but for now I just like the consistent straight build of just having like four of everything and it's really just the only issue with unlock potential is that it's uh, can be bad if you don't have that many units and it's a bit clunky at three power for what it does so having multiples can sometimes like take a lot of time to get them all played next we have praxis displacer as one of the two two drops of choice i initially was playing uh Merzen's disciple instead but i quickly realized that praxis displacer is basically just mostly a more flexible um, praxis displacer in this deck like if you have a grenade and drone out you can bounce the drone and replay the drone then you have like a bad disciple basically and the bounce effect from practice displacer is very relevant in this deck like since we are fairly aggressive and build a lot of board just bouncing like that most expensive biggest blocker of the opponent for a turn can set them so far back that they have no shot at ever like winning through blocking and removing our stuff other than like a sweeper because they will just be one turn behind on eating a unit each turn and take too much damage from all the units it goes through which is why i opted for this blazer the destabilization effect is very important and when it's not that good we have various things that we can bounce we can return acolyte scribe favored or drone to our hand to re reuse the summon triggers and um, these to use the summon effects uh, to generate some value basically indirectly adding the summoning effect summon effect to praxis displacer next we have titan i initially tried and considered disciple and displacer at some point but the problem that i felt is like um then we have like no way of stalling that well and buying ourselves some time to set up and are particularly vulnerable to a bunch of flyers and titan just uh, mitigates both of that and it's probably just too important especially also against like other titans out of titan decks because our deck is kind of bad at answering titan other than just like stalling it with our own titan or at some point flame blasting it but that takes a while so yeah that's why um ultimately titan made the cut over disciple as well even though it's like the only basically um, good removal target in the entire deck other than Isalio, which is a bit annoying but I think it's a necessary evil yeah and then we have four obelisk not much explanation needed the card that makes um, the big payoff card that makes the deck possible and viable and is like the main reason to play so many like free bodies and like token makers to go wide for and and yeah, and then Isalio that I already mentioned basically. Um, he is like an additional uh, payoff card to like enhance our go wide stuff. Like we build a big board, game drags out a bit, we drop an Isalio and just turn our board sideways, and the opponent has to trade with our free bodies. And since we have more than they do, we end up with a bunch of units left, and their board mostly just dies to our stuff. And they go low and then next turn they just die stuff like that and last but not least we have the power base 
very unspectacular and straight. Six fire, seven time, twelve duels. Um, I considered and tried a monument, like one time monument for example, for a bit. The problem is, first of all, the deck wants to curve out pretty smoothly, so the depleted power can be really annoying. Second of all, we either have to shave on fire, which is bad for our flame blast and our drones, or we have to shave undepleted turn one time, which is bad for our initiative descent. So it just really doesn't fit that well. And the deck has some good power things with flame blast later on and really wants to hit eight for obelisk. So that's why I opted against any um, any monuments in this. Like if there was a 26 power, maybe it would be a time monument, not sure. But yeah, that's the deck list for now. There's not that much to explain this time, sim simply because we have a very dedicated linear strategy with, as you can see, as many four offs as possible and like a situational late game two off as a payoff card basically and the minimum power because we have favored acolyte and initiate to virtually increase our power like we basically have 29 power plus initiate and acolyte and 28 to, to 29 is a good amount to guarantee being able to actually uh, play amber acolyte to get our force power and yeah that's something to keep in mind because unlike favored where you're basically guaranteed to have two power in your opening hand thanks to the redraw acolyte is only power if you ever hit that third power and if you get an opening hand with two power and acolyte and you never f draw the third power before it's too late then acolyte doesn't help you at all so it's important to have like 28 or 29 um, power reliable power before that, since initiative is not reliable, gets killed and silenced all the time, and it's also ex meant to accelerate, not to make up for a uh, power drop, um, means that with 3 to 4 favored and 25 power, we have like the minimum to have like a 90% chance to play our Acolyte on turn 3, which is good. Just wanted to point that out, how that works and how to like evaluate a power base like this, basically. All right, that's it um, for the deck tech. As usual, I'm gonna hop into some Masters League games with the deck and show how to pilot it and how it does in action. Um, please like and subscribe if you haven't yet to help the channel grow. Thanks for watching. See you in a moment with the first half of the games. Stay tuned.